Hello and welcome back to Functional Analysis. And as always, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. We've reached part 3 in our course and today we will talk about some important notions in metric spaces. Please recall a pair consisting of a set X and a metric D is called a metric space. We've already discussed that if you fix a point X in a metric space, you can look at all the other points that have the same distance from this point X. Seeing that in the common geometry of the plane, this would be a circle around X. Or in a three-dimensional space, it would be a sphere, or you could call it a ball. Now exactly this notion of a ball is what we want to generalize for an abstract metric space. We write B epsilon X and call it the open epsilon ball around X. It is defined as all the points y in our metric space x that fulfill that the distance from x to y is less than a given radius epsilon. However, this means that in the picture it's not the red line, it's everything inside. Now please note that for a given positive radius epsilon and a fixed point x from the metric space, this epsilon ball is never empty because at least the point x lies in this set. Using this definition of an epsilon ball, we can now talk about a lot of important notions in a metric space. The first one I want to show you is about open sets. You may already know what open means in Rn, but now we define it for arbitrary subsets of our metric space x. So let's take this subset A and I will use this symbol to denote a subset. Now descriptively openness should mean that if you are inside a set A, you should never see the boundary of the set. In other words, if you fix an arbitrary point X of the set A, there should be enough points in all directions around this point that also belong to the set A. Of course, in order to describe this, we can use such an epsilon ball. We just have to choose a positive epsilon, but we can choose it as small as we need it. And if we can do that for each point separately, then we have an open set A. Therefore, the definition reads like a set is called open if for each point we can find such an epsilon ball. Of course, for each x you can choose another epsilon if needed. In the picture this would mean if you get closer to the boundary, you need a smaller epsilon, of course. However, as long as you find for each point such an epsilon, we call the set open. Don't worry, we have consistency here. The so-called open balls are also open with this definition. This is a simple exercise you can do for yourself. Now, with your knowledge of open sets, you might also want to know what closed sets are. However, before we do that, let's talk about so-called boundary points. Let's take our arbitrary subset A again, and now we look in the picture maybe at points around here. At the moment it's not important if the point we have chosen is an element of our set A or not. Of course, it's a point in our whole metric space X. The important thing is that with these points we describe something that we could call the boundary of A. And of course we use the epsilon balls again for this. Now what you should see is if we have an epsilon ball around this point, then we hit points that are in A and we hit other points that are not. Of course, this clearly can happen. However, if it happens no matter how small we choose the ball, then we are clearly on a thing we could call the boundary. Then the definition reads, a point x from the whole metric space x is called a boundary point for A if all open balls around x contain points from A and the complement of A. For the formula here, we just use the intersection and say this one can't be empty and also not the one when you use the complement of A. There are some important things I should point out here. First, a boundary point can be inside a set A or outside. And secondly, the notion boundary point makes only sense with respect to a given subset A. There is a symbol to denote all the boundary points, which is used very often. It's this curved del in front of A. So we put all the points x that are boundary points for A into this set. 
Now you can remember an open set is exactly such a set where all the boundary points are outside of A. When you see this, then you immediately understand what a closed set should be. It should be a set where all the boundary points belong to this set. Using the same formula, this reads A is closed if and only if A with the union of the boundary is A again. However, that's not what one uses as the definition for closed sets. The definition is much simpler. A subset A in X is now called closed if the complement in X, which is AC, is open. This makes sense because the boundary points of A and the complement are exactly the same. And this just means that all the boundary points belong to A and not AC. Now the last notion for today will be the so-called closure. The name already tells you if you start with an arbitrary subset A, what you want to get out is a closed subset. How to get this you might already know. You just add all the missing boundary points. So you form the union with the boundary. And this is what we call the closure of A. And we denote that with A overline. Now please remember, this always defines a closed set. Indeed, it's the smallest closed set that still contains A. Okay, now I would suggest that the closure of this video is an example. It shouldn't be too complicated, so let's choose a metric space consisting of real numbers. X is now defined as all the numbers between 1 and 3, where 3 is included, and all numbers larger than 4. And the metric is just defined as the normal distance function we have for real numbers. Okay, let's start considering some subsets of X. And the first one is the interval from 1 to 3, which is of course a nice subset of X. My question for you is now, is this also an open set? So this is how you should visualize the set and now we look at each point here and try to find an epsilon ball around this point. Now you see this is possible for all x that are in A but not 3. What you can do is just look at the distance what should be the boundary here left and right and choose the minimal you have. And if you want you can make that even smaller to get to the picture here. Maybe you divide by 2. And then the epsilon ball around x is indeed exactly inside the set A. However, if we want to have an open set, we need this property also for the point 3. Okay, so let's write down an epsilon ball, maybe with radius 1. These are all the points y and x where the distance is less than 1. So let's write down that as an interval. We already know that the interval 2 to 3 fulfills this property here. And the question is now, are there any other points that have distance less than 1 from 3? It can't be anything here in this area, because the points are too far away from 3. And also in this interval we don't find any points. Because the distance from 3 to 4 is already 1, but 4 is not included. In summary, indeed, these are all the points we find in X. However, this is a subset of A. So our conclusion is indeed A is an open set. Okay, so this is an important thing to get today. The question openness makes only sense if you know what the surrounding universe, the whole metric space X is. Otherwise you won't be able to calculate the epsilon ball in X itself. In this case the epsilon ball around 3 has only one side. So it looks like this. Now what you can also show is that the set A here is also a closed set. This is what you also should immediately remember. Openness and closeness are not opposites. Surely you can have both at the same time, but it can also happen that a set is neither closed nor open. Okay, so let's do a last example here. So this is our set C, 1 to 2, where 2 is included, and I want to calculate the boundary of C. So this is our drawing for the set C and you can immediately see that for all points below 2 you can do the same thing as before here. Which means you get an epsilon ball which is completely inside the set C itself. So it's not a boundary point. Which means the only point we have to consider now is the point 2 itself 
and then you see immediately. If we look at an Epsom ball around two, we will hit points here on the left and also on the right. Now there are points on the right. That's different from the three before. Hence our boundary is just the point two, nothing more. And to conclude the whole video, maybe you also write down the closure of C and you see it's C itself, which means the set is closed. Okay, now I hope you understand these notions now a little better. And in the next video, I will explain how we deal with them when we use sequences. So thanks for listening and see you next time. Bye.